For more videos, visit forthesakeofeducation.com. All right, guys, let me do these two problems that says if the force in each cable uh, tied to the beam is 70 pounds, determine the magnitude and coordination uh, angles of the resultant force. And then they change it up a bit and they say if the resultant force is this, what is the tension developed in each cable? In other words, what is each of the forces if they're all the same? What you gotta notice right off the bat that's gonna make this problem a million times easier is the symmetry. There is symmetry in the x and there is symmetry in the y axis. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you is that the forces acting towards the positive x and the forces acting towards the negative x are gonna cancel out because they're the same and the forces acting towards the positive y and the forces acting towards the negative y are going to cancel out as well and there's only going to be force along the c axis so the resultant force is only going to have a c component so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to notice okay you got the force is equal to 70 pounds you got a is equal to 3i minus 2j plus 0k b is equal to 3i plus 2j plus 0k c is equal to negative 3i plus 2j plus 0k and d is equal to negative 3i minus 2j plus 0k and e which is the point right at the top sits at 0i plus 0j plus 6k now that you have all these points let's just work with ea and just by figuring it out this one we're gonna figure it out all of them you'll see so ea is equal to ex minus ax i plus ey minus ayj plus ec minus ac k now that you have uh, these values, you have that is 3i minus 2j plus 6k. E -A. This is a vector. So we find the magnitude by doing the square root of the x squared plus y squared plus c component squared. Each of these three values squared and square rooted. And you get that the magnitude is 7. Find the unit vector of Ea is only a matter of dividing the vector Ea by its magnitude and you get that the unit vector is equal to 0.429i minus 0.286j minus 0.857k now we're given the force which is 70 so multiplying the force by this unit vector will give us the Cartesian vector form of the force A or whichever force but this is this is gonna give us a because it's e to a so the magnitude of the force is 70 so f of a is equal to the magnitude of the force times unit vector e to a and it's gonna come out to be 30i minus 20j minus 60k now it's where it gets fun we have also f of b f of c and f of d right and notice something 3 3 3 and 3 this one is 2 2 2 and 2 and this one's 0 0 0 0 so as you can see the values are the same just the signs change if the values are the same this is gonna be all 30 this is gonna be all 20 this is gonna be all 60 and look at the values positive negative negative positive negative ne uh, positive negative uh, positive this is positive 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 so this is going to be positive and positive and this is still going to be negative because even if it's just zero zero is really neither positive nor negative and it's always going to be negative 60 because they all are going to attribute to a component down so they are going to be negative 60 but look at the forces this one's going towards the quadrant which is uh, positive on the uh, x and negative on the y 
positive on the x, negative on the y. f of b is going towards this quadrant, which is positive and positive, positive on the x and positive on the y. f of c is going to the quadrant that's positive on the y and negative on the x. And f of d is going to the quadrant that is negative on both of them. Now to find the resultant force, you're going to add all of it together, but check this out. 30 plus 30 is 60. Minus 30 minus 30 is 0. They cancel out. Minus 20 plus 20 cancels out. Plus 20 minus 20 cancels out. So 0i plus 0j. 60 minus 60 minus 60 minus 60 is basically negative 60 times 4. So it's negative 240k. So the resultant force is negative 240k. The magnitude is obviously 240. There's no much, uh, no much to think about there. And the angles are very easy to calculate. Uh, remember, it's the cosine inverse of the x component over the magnitude, cosine inverse of the y component over the magnitude, and cosine inverse of the c component over the magnitude. Now, there is no um, x or c component, so this is 90 degrees. I'm sorry, there's no x or y component, so this is 90 degrees. This is 90 degrees because cosine of 0 is 90. And the c is 180 degrees because it's going straight down. Now, they want you to uh, figure out the second. This is it for the first problem, but they want you to figure out the second problem which is if the resultant force is negative 360k, what is the force uh, developed in each of the cables? So well, this is very easy to calculate now that we have all these values. If f of r is negative 360k, then each of the forces, let's say force A, all the, all the forces are doing the same thing, but force A, for example, is going to be x in the i, minus y in the j. We don't know neither x uh, nor y, but we do know that that uh, f of a is in the positive x and the negative y, so we know the signs, positive and negative, minus 90, k. 90, where this 90 come from, is 360 divided by 4. There's four forces, each one attribute, attributing equally towards this resultant force. So you just divide it by 4 and it's uh, negative 90. But you know that the univector ea times the force that we're trying to find is equal to dx minus the y minus the c and the c we do know so we know that the c component of this unit vector which is right here which will be 0.857 times the force is going to be equal to negative 90 so if you solve for f is negative 90 over 0.857 and you're going to get that the force is equal to 105 pounds final answer so each of these forces if the total equal resultant force is negative 360 each of these forces is going to be equal to 105 pounds final answer please comment below if you want me to do any problems and i'll be happy to help thank you